Oh, welcome to another edition of the Planet yeah, Focal Itch. Yeah, As you can see, we're in another raid. I believe it's like third, no, 42 or 43. Um, we've already taped the thing off ourselves, but they're going to tape it again. Why are they heading around that? Because they want to take it. Do they know that? They're just getting ready. Okay, so the 9th District Federal Court in uh, L.A. basically said that it was illegal and unconstitutional to take person's property uh, that is un unmanned and that it's illegal and un unconstitutional to destroy anybody's property regardless of uh, how long they store it. The federal court there says that uh, they believe a 90, 90 days is uh, what should be allowed to store it. And in the, no circumstances should they uh, destroy anything on, on the spot. So, here in Honolulu, they say they allow you 30 days. But as we know, even stuff is untagged, if it's untagged, um, they just pick it up and throw it in the back of the truck and destroy it right there and then, right there and then. Uh, they, here in Honolulu, they give you 24 hours after they tag it for you to remove the stuff, and they, they believe that that uh, gives them the right to do whatever they want after that 24 hours. But as we heard from the 9th District Federal Court, under no circumstances is anybody allowed to destroy anything and that uh, they say that if it's left unmanned they're not able to just take it but see what makes makes it worse here in Honolulu and uh, the city council and the corporate council and everybody continues to lie to the public is the difference between LA and here is they forcefully that's what all this tape is for forcefully separate people from their items so even if you are man manning the stuff like if you're a student and you're sitting there using uh, your computer or whatever they don't like it or if they don't like you they can immediately just take your or separate you from the item then claim that it's left unmanned and uh just uh, destroy it right there and then. Okay, we have a problem that's going on down there with uh, tents, but I don't want to leave. One of the tents has been knocked down. Here we have Wesley T Chun on camera taking free speech. He's piled it in this area to be destroyed. So uh, that'd be Wesley Chun. He's a director of facility maintenance. This individual has committed, uh, just at this camp, a couple times of violence. He's used, uh, he's used uh, chairs as weapons on individuals. That's a little thing called the Constitution. Maybe you've heard of it. So.
Okay. Now, this item that Wesley Chun has in his hands is something that was not tagged. So, right there, he just went against uh, the city and county's uh, ordinance 1121 that all items need to be given 24 hours before they can do anything with it. They don't care about their own laws. See, people are so mis uh, uh, misinformed here. They believe it's HPD that's actually doing this action against us. And it has nothing to do with the police. Because if you see the city right now, the city and county is paying for the police officers just to stand there. They're not even watching the scene of what's going on or what Wesley's doing or what we're even doing. Every single one of them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just in this area, then we have 9, 10, 11, 11 officers just in this area, none of which is watching any anything that has to do with us or what the city and county is doing. And this is where some of the complaints come in because, as we all know, they've uh, just on this particular camp they've uh, basically hit like a million dollars I believe to come out here and fight but this is what they do is stand here and don't even deal with the, the situation at hand so just uh, more stuff that they uh, lie to the, the citizens about of what's actually going on They, they don't realize that the city council gave authority to street repairmen to confiscate items and destroy items with no training or understanding of any law, nor even a requirement to know what the constitution is. And that's why things are getting done. The police, they keep themselves preoccupied just just to look like they're here and don't do anything with anything. It's all a waste of money. The city council actually authorized the uh, street repairmen to not fix our streets because if, as you notice they don't really fix streets. They dig holes and tear our streets up. Never finish them because of this purpose that they do throughout the whole island. Wesley Chun is taking a, a great stride to run around the island like a high school bully and just do whatever he wants, regardless of any laws from the federal court, constitution, the U.S. Constitution, state constitution, or uh, the Hawaiian Kingdom laws. What's also interesting to point out is in 2008, President Obama required every governor to come up with a plan of exactly how they were going to uh, deal with and solve the houseless issue within 10 years. Uh, Neil Abercrombie has came up with a document that's r rather nicely written. And uh, the city, uh, from what we were told by them, or by the governor's office, and what you see in that document, the city council, DFM, and HPD is allowing uh, the state of Hawaii, or at least here on Oahu, to go against 
that uh, written form that Neil Abercrombie signed and sent to President Obama personally. So, this is not just a U.S. Constitution or a state constitution. This is not the Law of the Splinter Paddle. This is an actual signed document by the state from Neil Abercrombie of exactly how we were going to deal with this. And the city council's uh, believes that they can just go against all of it. They, the ones that they're representing doesn't matter what laws or agreements or anything that was done. It places uh, the state of Hawaii in a real interesting position. Now, to go back down there, what's going on is the street repairmen are uh, going through people's belongings. It's illegal search and seizure. As you can see, none of the police officers are in that area. They're not dealing with anything about it, but they're definitely going through people's property. Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment protects the right to have property. Uh, the same amendment is what the federal... Ninth District Federal Court has found in clear violation and uh, these activities are not to be conducted. I believe that the, the citizens did have a right and a, a real concern to ask the city to do something about the houseless situation. That situation can be taken care of, but through Carlisle's uh, guidance, he asked another gentleman that's currently a candidate for one of the races that's coming up on November 6th to come up with something that would deal with it. Housing is a human right! Fight! 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 Housing is a human right! Fight! 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 It's a human right! Fight! 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 Things have gotten actual interesting. Uh, they're concerned about this tent down here, the red one, with the silver top. And we'll see what's going to happen there. As you see here, they've just stripped down another tent. No officer is touching this. Eleven officers here, and no one has touched it. It's illegal search and seizure by a city worker. You know, an average citizen. We have uh, Kevin, one of the Aloha officers, now talking to an individual that's uh, still inside the red tents. So as you see here, they're going through that person's property, and it's not even the police that's doing it. This is where a major problem comes in. Another difference between here in Honolulu and L.A. The people that dealt with the seizures and was destroying of property in LA was actual police officers, ones that are hired 
and has an understanding of the city ordinances and laws within here regular citizens that hold street, you know a job as a street repairman go through people's belongings and destroy it Now don't forget that lady in the in the white and green. That'd be Trish Morikawa. She's the head of the housing committee, and uh, she's making eighty thousand dollars a year to perform unconstitutional and illegal activities to not just this camp, but to the camps all over. It. And as we know, what happened with Kiao, uh, several people. It's getting a little loud here, sorry guys. But as we know what happened in Kiao, several kids was kicked out of school because their parents were houseless. That right there is to keep more generations of people from being able to progress and move on and do better in their lives. It's a clear determination to keep a person down and keep houseless on this island. They don't care how many's on this island. They there's many activist groups out there that's trying to help people to get off the streets and these people are combating all that they want them on the streets at another camp around the same time as Kiao we had I believe three individuals that killed themselves during the raids within 24 hours of the raids you know it's uh, the Kiao, Kiao one because one family uh, was trying to move before they actually did the raid there was a loss of a little child that was killed. Um, these raids do nothing for people besides strip their very survival away from them. It plays a, a, a toll on their mental health because they're already on their last one. The city doesn't want to help, doesn't offer services, and uh, continuously denies people and just destroys everything that they have for their own benefit it's not humane it's a lot of these people is your family friends co-workers you know uh, I, think of it this way your neighbor that you've been living next to for 10 20 years like uh, one gentleman that I that we know is on the street out here works at UH as a physicist, a physicist and uh, being a science teacher he's helped many of our students uh, get college degrees allowed them to do better in their life with cutbacks loses his job he's in his uh, mid 60s and uh, from that point he ends up on the street because he's over educated over qualified and too old. Now, this is a gentleman that has years of history is helping our public and children do better in their lives. His repayment isn't because he's he was jobless, isn't because he wasn't educated, isn't because he was on drugs or alcohol. It's simply because of cutbacks within today's society of our economic issues and found himself on the street and the city, the city continuously re, repays him by his, his uh, community service by stealing his stuff from him everywhere he goes just so he could try and survive housing first guys that's the way you need to do this it's an educated man that would have no issues to do something for, for himself but he has no chance to keep a job has no chance to do better and uh, the city continuously breaks him down like he did something wrong and the only thing he did wrong was help our community survive and do better yet there's several individuals on the streets like that several individuals who work someone working more than one job because they have a family to try and support and they're only they're only maybe 20 or 30 percent shy 
from being able to afford the average apartment so they could be off the street. But because of minimum wage that's set at seven twenty five or because of the high housing costs, you know, because of the strain and financial burden it places on them to continuously have to combat the fact that they're stealing everything they have from them over and over again just so they can let their families survive, they can't get themselves off the street and nobody here, as you see, will walk up and even offer support and help or suggestion on how to get off the street. Housing first, job location, or job training. There's plenty of unions that I've talked to in this on this island that'd be more than willing to enter into a program that would allow both training and a job to an individual that's willing to work and be productive and help them get off the street. But no city official, no police officer, no city worker or street repairman wants to take the time to help them locate these jobs so they can do better. They just want to steal their items from them. It's all about property. Here in Honolulu, life is of no, no purpose. It's all about property. This is sickening. I've been here for almost 11 months combating this. And we, ba we basically, we have Bill 54 beat now. But the city refuses to let go and just say, fine. How do you want to fix it? No, instead they want to keep wasting money. As the city is screaming that they need more money, that they're wanting to raise the general excise tax, they're talking of taking away exemptions from our nonprofits that help people to get off the street, nonprofits that helps our communities with their religion, nonprofits that helps people get medical care, nonprofits that helps our agricultural land survive. They want to charge them when they're already having a tough time providing services that we should be seeing from our, our government and from our community to do. They want to charge them, charge our schools, charge our nonprofits, charge homeowners. This is something that people have to realize, they have to think about. No tax should have the power to evict you from your home. And that's what they do here. It's the same thing. The taxes that everybody's paying is not meant to help anyone. It's not about the people. It's about property. What can they obtain? What can they have? What is the most profitable? This is why Bill 54 shouldn't be around. This is why we should be addressing the individuals that need physical or mental care. First, we have programs for that. We should be looking in the ways of getting them into the program. It would save people money by doing it. The amount of money that comes into the multi-millions of dollars a year to take care of the individuals when they are when they have health problems, ambulance rides, and everything else because they're on the street. The amount of energy that is wasted to feed individuals that should be off the street, the amount of energy and resources that is waste by having equipment like this with garbage removal men and street repairmen to do this against the public and our community, organizers, activists, teachers, healthcare providers alone should be illegal. Okay, they just broke into this tent that was locked. You do not want to do this. Don't touch the tent. Protect the Fourth Amendment. Don't touch the tent. Protect the 
This is a tent that was that uh, these individuals felt that they didn't they did not want to leave. That the city should not be able to force them away from their property. This is the same law that's able to do this with your vehicle. It's the same law that's able to do this within your own house. As we building over here, if you can see on the corner, there's a gas station and building next door. The police ran into that building without a warrant, probable cause or anything, and stole people's items. He does have a point. There is no line. While the individuals are in the tent, Wesley Chun is dismantling the tents with the people in it, placing them at risk. We have police officers talking to the individuals inside. And not one time is anybody offering help to the individual. As you can see, the tent is slowly but surely starting to drop around the individuals. This places the city in jeopardy if something was to happen. Do you think it's wise uh, for Wesley Chun to be dismantling the tent with the individuals in it? Because it will be the city that's liable for any uh, harm that's done. understand forcing an individual away from their property or freedom of movement is against national law and our U.S. and state constitution. You put this tape up. This is where I was. Well, we're putting up our tape now, so can you move okay. back just a little bit, sir? Hey, you don't need to hand me. You don't touch me, ma'am. Yeah. This is this is the this is the thing. You know, it's against the uh, uh, Ninth District Federal Court, right? This is an illegal action. Stop now before you do any more damage. That sign is for a amendment. Every 
Well, actually, only if it's deemed that it's uh, uh, harmful in some way, that it's that's uh, hurting somebody. If it's a safety issue, that's the only reason why they they would have. Please stop stepping in front of me while I'm trying to talk. Um, yeah, the only reason why anybody would have legitimacy to take something uh, on site is if it's a safety hazard, is from what the Federal Ninth District Court has stated. So if they do do such things, they would have to store it. They can't destroy. Yeah, they, they're clearly forcing people away from their property, and they're destroying stuff immediately, which is even worse than what was going on in L.A. So, you know, the city doesn't care. They, they don't care about the fines. They don't care about the millions of dollars that's going to be coming around from all this activity. What they rather care is that they charge you more on taxes, uh... Take away your tax exemptions for uh, projects like the rail and not address any of the other transportation issues here because everybody that should be working on a street is here stealing stuff from camps all over the island. <laughs> there isn't a single thing of real progression that's helping anybody here. It's a waste of energy, a waste of time and funds. This is not sustainable. This is not helpful for anyone. <laughs> I'll be uh, posting this up on my website for everybody at uh, www.votecsmith.com. Then it's www.votes. Smith.com so uh, people can see what what's going on here so currently the, the three individuals are still inside the tent and uh a half constructed structure <laughs> because the street repairmen started tearing it down around them. The law of the splinter paddle says a person has a right to the roadside to sleep by the roadside and protection of their, themselves and of property. The agreement for a 10 year plan that was signed by Neil Amercombe to President Obama is uh, that this activity would not be going on and that they would be doing something to actually get the people off the street and not harm them. Federal District Court said that they have no right to destroy things, which they have, let alone uh, for anyone to infringe on their mobility or right to personal self and property under the uh, Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments. There is just nothing here that's legal and constitutional and nothing that's helpful for our community or the island. There's so many other ways we could do this that's so much cheaper. Involvement with our community and labor unions, just any of the unions, would establish a bridge that would be able, that would allow job training and job location. Very minimal in cost, but saves the city millions and millions of dollars. Go home! It's not worth it! It's so much easier to deal with. Anybody that needs physical or mental needs, there's programs for it that they should have already been addressing, and things should be done with that. Individuals that are working, we're talking minimal of differences in cost to get them off the street. 
people that just need a job, people that need uh, a better job, people that just need training to be able to get promoted within their jobs, unions that's able to provide them better health care and uh, have better, better services of different amenities for their families that would make it possible for them to be off the street. These are all things that doesn't cost the taxpayer anywhere near how much it's costing them to do these activities. This is about property, not people. Property is worth more than people in Honolulu. And you can see that in every facet of what goes on within our local government around here. Time to go home, guys! You do not want to do this. All the different projects that we spend our money on. What is people's concerns once they start going on it? That the people aren't being addressed. This is normal practice for the, for the city and county to do. It doesn't matter about the people. The people make a suggestion. They take it over. And it's all about how much money they can make. What can they have? You know the saying, boys and their toys. Nice selection of beverages. I hope you have McDonald's for lunch. Supersize it. Give me a giant cookie. Time to go home, gentlemen. You never tried regular size and coke? It's much easier to uphold the Constitution than to break it. Go home! Yeah, that Constitution is coming up. If you do that, then break it. Well, then the law has ramifications afterwards. All you are doing is setting up your police department and DFM for lawsuits. Go home! I would walk. Call that whole station in. Let's see that big ass police truck. You're setting yourself up for a say that to you. Seriously. The paper saying, I say it. Like, like you just come back. Right, right, right. Hey, hey, hey. How many years of human rights? Hey, hey, hey. How many years of human rights? Hey, hey, hey. Housing is a human
way out there guys they won't let us get any closer and uh, they don't have a zoom on this app just seen what that officer just picked up um, they have plans to even take in someone's crutches <laughs> I'm not sure how that's supposed to help anybody steal their crutches really <laughs> 
that important to take people's property, to take their personal needs uh, of survival, separate them from their crutches, and steal them? See, the easiest and cheapest thing that they can do in this situation, since there is no crime being violated, this is not a crime, and that's what people have to understand. Being houseless is not a crime. Vagrance is not a crime. Sleeping on the sidewalk is not a crime. Having your personal items on the sidewalk is not a crime. There is no crime that's being committed here. So they can't arrest anybody for doing any of this. They can't do anything about the person that's doing this. But what they're going to do is claim that they're stopping these individuals from doing government uh, <clears throat> actions, I guess you would say, you know, restricting them from being able to do their job. But what they, uh, what they do have knowledge of is that the people that's in office is forcing each and every one of these people to do what they know is not right, and that's by breaking the law. <laughs> and doing unconstitutional things. <laughs> so, what we have here is more city officials, fire firemen, now EMTs, all involved with three individuals that refused to leave one tent. All the rest of the items are gone. Nice and clean, right? But it's, let's spend thousands and thousands of more dollars for one tent, because we have to have that piece of property that badly that we're going to cost taxpayers thousands of more dollars waste more time create a bigger spectacle than just walk away and say fine keep your tent but we'll be back violating your civil rights again by trying to take it from you again you, you see this the vicious circle that means uh, what takes place <laughs> If they keep coming back and threatening you and threatening you and threatening you. But when it comes down to one tenth, is it worth the thousands of dollars in time for that one piece of property? What makes that $30 tent so valuable to them that they have to spend thousands to take it? People will say, well, it's precedence because it shouldn't be there. Maybe it shouldn't be there, but maybe that's the problem. We should be looking at alter, alternative ways to handle the situation, like the houseless, and uh, alleviate this kind of activity from happening. The only reason why the Occupy movement is here with their tents is because they refuse to address the houseless issue. And I can guarantee that our prior elected officials that is now in a candidacy to have a seat in office in various locations are the same ones that allowed this type of activity that brought our island to this type of activity. Think about it. Is it worth putting the same people in office that keep making these same type of decisions of wasting people's money for property, for toys, or to make them feel big and bad? when there's obviously a much easier, simpler, and cheaper solution right here. Why is, you know, I mean, you always hear turn the other cheek or walk away, pick your battles well. What do you think the city's doing right now? When they've confiscated everything else, they cleaned up the sidewalk, regardless of illegal or not. When they did all that, it comes down to one tent Why is it worth so many thousands of dollars to take 30 bucks worth of merchandise that they can buy themselves at Target? This is unsustainable activity. You can't say the individuals in the tent is what's costing raising our taxes. They're not, they're just sitting. It's the individuals standing around them right now that's forcing that. That type of logic, that type of thinking.
that they have to be some kind of high school bully and claim everyone's property. We have videotape of them doing it in people's residence, in their businesses. The city has no boundaries. This is unrestrained, unrestrained bulliness. I mean, that's... You know, it, it, you, you got to think of it like this, right? It, if the government is able to do something that you're not able to do, what is the definition of that? Clear definition. Tyranny. People might laugh at that. Look it up. If the government is able to do something that you are not able to do yourself, legally, what is that? And then you got to ask yourself, what is the purpose of that? Is this capitalism or is this crony capitalism? Is this to benefit the citizens of the city? Or is this to benefit the corporations of the city? Who, see, who gets a bigger benefit from this? And what is that purpose for? This is what the islands become. This is why we're here. I can offer a means. I can offer a real solution. We can alleviate a lot of this real quickly. Save our islands. Save the Aloha spirit. Rebuild our communities, our middle class, and bring up our lower class with our middle class. So easy. If people don't like the stuff on the sidewalks, if people don't like the fact that there's people on the sidewalks, why fight them? Why not give them a helping hand? Don't give them a hand out. I don't believe in handouts. Give them a hand up. Pick them up. Say, hey, what's the problem? What do we need to do here? I mean, we can ask all the property owners that's here that has all, there's what, approximately four to six, uh, living spaces for every single houseless person in the whole state just on this island. One island. Four to six places for every single person that's houseless in Hawaii on this island. The city owns abandoned buildings that brings down everyone's property value. It brings down the way the community looks. Why don't we utilize those places and say, hey, Let's put someone in there. Let's man these places and bring up our, our communities, appearance, and the way it functions. Why don't the, the business owners that have these ap apartments, why don't we work out something where it doesn't cost them any money, it doesn't co ta cost the taxpayers any money, by just offer them a tax break for getting the houseless off the streets taking that little bit of what's needed to to help them and instead of wasting it away through program after program after program and, and employees after employees after employees to do this kind of activity why don't we just cut the hundreds of middlemen out and give it straight to our business community and get the people off the street efficient way of funds, an efficient means to do this. It saves everyone money in the long run. And it's more humane.
Occupy group is still working hard over there, trying to inform each of the city employees of what's right and what's wrong. You can see themselves, they're even trying to figure it out. You have a cluster of city repairmen, a cluster of VMTs and firemen, and a cluster of HPD, all trying to figure out the easy solution. Walk away. Stop causing this mess. Stop blaming the individuals that's in the tent and wonder what is going on with our government that is so important to take someone's tent that they can buy themselves at Target. They did their jobs. The sidewalks are nice and clean. $30 tent just cost thousands of dollars to obtain. If the mayor wanted this so bad, why didn't he just send his secretary to go get a goddamn tent for him? Let's get real about this. This isn't about safety. This isn't about people's needs. This isn't about what's right or wrong. It's about power and how they want to use it in a crony capitalist society. This is being a bully. That's all this is. One single tent. If you truly love your community, it's time to do something different. Make a change for a change. Find my Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash revolution. Again, that's Revolution Nova. Go to my website at www.votecsmith.com. Find out how to really do this. It's been about a, what a half an hour now? Yeah. yeah. So the police showed up. Oh, well, uh, I don't blame you, I'm just saying. <laughs> you gotta realize.
like five days old. And I'm in the top I feel it's needed. Huh? I said I feel it's needed. I'm District 6 uh, candidate for Smith, if you guys want to know. So. two television networks here. We have two television networks here now. This is becoming much bigger news. All I had to do was just walk away. One tent. Thirty dollar tent. I mean, if you notice, I mean, all this, because they want a thirty dollar tent from Target. <laughs> Uh, the city feels that it's better to uh, spend thousands of dollars of taxpayers' money to obtain that $30 Target tent. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's Bill 54 at its finest. Yeah. It's this good. is what they're doing. It's the Department of Money Farming. Yeah, like, exactly. How you keep the beef going. <laughs> For all you tuning in, we have three people chained to a pallet inside of a $30 Target tent, and uh, this is what we do. <laughs> this is what the city does, because they want a $30 Target tent. It's that important.
I was just looking at the time. It's been 67 minutes. It doesn't seem that long, does it? I thought it was like a half an hour. I sent out the back signal. Don't worry, Commissioner. I'm going to start the press. You ever dance with the devil in the of the moonlight? You know, this has been going on for over an hour. Really? Yeah, it's been uh, 67 minutes. Damn. <laughs> I don't know what the hell to do. Yeah. <laughs> This is crazy. Did they ask me for my name? I'm gonna say Joker. Go home. <laughs> yeah, you just stay away from them. They won't ask. Huh? You just stay away from them. They won't ask. They don't care. I'm sure that these emergency workers have somewhere to be. I know you knuckleheads only got to go to donut shops and Musubi or what is that called? The little pot of donut here. Manasada. <laughs> I know you guys got to go get some Manasada, and these other people might have something to do. And save people's lives. For hey, real. aloha. Save your country, Japan. Don't Send us me. help. Welcome. Send help. The Send police. help. It's safe. It's safe for shit. A lot of cameras, dude. Huh? Eskimo candy. It's safe for crap. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peanut! Is, you should get a cane! You should get a cane! I swear, Halloween's coming up! Think about it! Is the $30 Target tent worth all this? You can buy one! I can help you pick it out! <laughs> You're not gonna leave, the news is not gonna leave! Oh my gosh! Uh oh, okay. Look oh, yeah. at this guy is on the search. What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? Oh, he's supposed to be up to go outside. Well, then he asked me my name. What'd you tell him? Suck it? No. I'm <laughs> kidding. Like he couldn't find out my name. <laughs> huh? It's not like he doesn't know my name. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Have you guys noticed the idiocracy that's up there? How stupid is it? Seriously, what's the legal code for a megaphone in the park? None. <laughs> 69. Hey, Commissioner, what's the legal code for megaphone in the park? Is that a law? I don't think so. <laughs> Is that an imaginary law? You just write scribble scrabble on the section number and then sign your name. As long as they sign it, it goes to the corporate legal system, right? Then you can cut the plea bargain to a crime that is real. Pretty slick, you guys. Pretty slick.
I need y'all help. I ain't coming for y'all. I'm gonna beat them up myself. Okay, so uh, I, I noticed that people are using the social stream here. Uh, Susan from Maui. Hilarious. Love you all. Love you too. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, Barnabas Collins. Aloha, Susan. <laughs> so they're talking to each other too on here. Hey, I'm on uh, the jumper. It's much better than Batman. We also have archive of, of the ticketing. Cool. Still is much better. It's smarter. <laughs> Number is not 34, it's more like 43. <laughs> this is like raid 43. Yeah. Solidarity from Florida. Thank you, Florida. And the UK. Uh, Hawaii Kai. Are people still in the tent? What are EMS people doing? Well, as you can see, EMS or the EMTs are all just kind of standing around in one little click. HBD is in another click. And uh, all the street repairmen are in another click. They're all in their own little clicks doing their own thing. It's, it's, yeah, they don't, they don't intermingle with each other. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's like watching the animal kingdom here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah, didn't know we were watching the Discovery Channel. <laughs> yeah, the three people in the tent chain themselves together into the tent. <laughs> so they're pretty wrapped up in there. Uh, they dismantled part of the tent with them still in it. Uh, yeah. A $30 Target tent. I've offered to, uh, you know, help them out on picking a tent at Target where they could pick one up that's, uh, well, you can't have the exact same one because this one's in use, but you can have one that looks very similar to it. And, uh, or they could go to the local Walmart and buy a different version of one Sears. Uh, you know, they're all over the place, sporting goods stores. I mean, I've offered to help them out. I'm picking a very good tent to use on the sidewalk, but they don't, they seem to want to spend thousands of dollars to go after this one, this one tent. <laughs> it's so important to them. EMT's left. Interesting. Fire department's leaving. Oh, you know, I'll give them, I'll give them love for sure. Solidarity all the way. Yes, Jamie, I know who you are. <laughs> okay, Jamie's on here watching this. She wants to give their, her love, especially the ones that's in there. So, you know, prior uh, Occupy Honolulu member. 
<laughs> Michael Tata wants to say hi. <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Should I back her up? <laughs> Oops! I was on the other side of the line. I was so breaking the red tape rule. <laughs> oh no! Don't don't don't! The plot thickens. Here at the Occupy, we have three members that have chained themselves to a pallet. DFM and police authorities feel it's more important to take a $30 tent than to just go and buy themselves one at Target. Ton ton ton. <laughs> Stay tuned for more news to you. Don't forget the 14. Yeah, 14. Protects person and property. Oh. <laughs> 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 you got one, you got four, you got three, you got a bottle, bottle, boy. No, no, the preamble to the state constitution, the, uh, what is it, the, the amendment, six and seven within the state constitution and you have the document written by Neil Abercrombie himself to President Obama on how they were going to handle uh, the houseless situation, what they are all going against. So yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of documents that says what they're supposed to do. <laughs> what are you guys going to learn? Thank you. She says good work everyone. Thank you. Thank you, paramedics. Appreciate it. Sorry to waste your time. Sorry to waste your time. Have a good day. You are awesome. Keep up the good work, paramedics. Oh, watch. <laughs> watch this species clutter. And here we have the native cup in its natural habitat. Yes. <laughs> We're discussing the plan afterwards. Which donut shop shall we hit after this raid? <laughs> Silly, silly, this is Hawaii. Malasada. <laughs> Donut like substance coated in sugar. <laughs> Good with potato salad. <laughs> you know Steve Irwin would enjoy this. <laughs> Stick his thumb yeah, up the poop. <laughs> Over that way. Don't sure no don't don't. <laughs> what? Haven't you wasted enough time in the park? Come on, my last 20 tweets to Twitter have been standing Hi. by the way. Wave, everyone. One more time. One more time. Wave. I'm going to get my jump. Oh. One more time. He I'm took a picture of us. Thank oh, you, kind people. sir. I'm picture I don't feel that you're stealing my soul. No. Come on, get this picture. <laughs> picture this. <laughs> Uh, is that for your personal collection? Hurry up, I'm getting hot and bothered. Get this super hot cop out of here. <laughs> He's making me all horny. The plastic. Officer needs the bag was the oh, It's oh, running away. Oh, get it! Get it! Officer needs assistance. In the natural oh, habitat. Oh, they chase after up. property. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, brother. <laughs> that was good. All right. See, oh, I, I've I've always liked him. He's always been cool. He's been he's always been awesome. He knows how to take a joke and go along with it. He's awesome.
<laughs> Just run it away! It's resisting arrest! <laughs> Get it! We can't lose our property. <laughs> this is mine. My sergeant gave it to me. <laughs> if I can't have this hit, God dang it, I'm going to go home with this bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been going on way too long. Okay, uh, what are we at? Um, we at 84 minutes. Yeah. 84. Are we there yet? <laughs> are we there yet? I gotta use the restroom. Hit it back up. Are we there yet? <laughs> Oh, uh. yeah. What's the matter, Wes? Can't figure out how to break the law and get away with it? Painting the line, painting the line, ah, 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 painting the line! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! There is two street repairmen actually doing a job for the street department. Holy crap! That is craziness! It's a miracle! Oh. Square. Wow! They're putting cones on the road! Hey, Why? Check it out! That's what you're supposed to be doing! <laughs> Why are they putting cones on there? Because we can't fix our transportation infrastructure. <laughs> Don't turn left when you're allowed to turn left. Or is that... Don't turn period while going down a one way. What are we doing in this city? <laughs> oh wait, all traffic is flowing that way. Don't go that way. <laughs> Keep on going. Let's go another three, four more blocks, half a mile out of our way, wasting gas and oil because we can't get our streets right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wonderful plan. So much fun. Yeah, oh, yeah. Which is why um, everyone thinks it's a big class and playing everyone's to be because it's illegal what they're doing. And for them to try to force the issue by calling the police department to what can be done, to call the fire department, to call the EMS. Uh, I'm sorry, the ambulance. Yeah, you know, the yeah. Uh, so actually all the emergency systems to what can be done to try to force them out. Um, so it's just a big waste of time. You know, I don't know if it's ignorance of the law or just blatantly trying to disregard the law. And that's the point is we've done our homework, we've consulted attorneys to figure out what, what we can and can't do, what is and isn't legal, so we know where everything stands. That's why they intentionally lock themselves in. Yeah. You know, and so because they cut the law, it's a big deal that we're going to fuss about it because they just committed an illegal act. And for them to keep all of around. Well, the individuals in that tent isn't breaking the law. No, I'm, t I'm talking about, about the police cutting yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. lock and then opening yeah. that up. Is that Morikawa, is that her name? The one that's Trish Morikawa, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's kind of the one on the city side who's been at a lot Yeah, of she's the head of the housing committee. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her on the phone like, I'm like, ooh, she's probably not home to camp right now. Well, it's more important to take a $30 tent than it is to protect uh, the people. So. No, 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 it's protecting people's rights. Right. <laughs> well, no, you gotta, you gotta, you haven't been present for that when they commit violence on some of these people, too. <laughs> so. Uh, well, well, or, or like all the deaths out. that's happened from some of the sweeps while they go on. So. 
Um, they are primarily people that just support Occupy and are part of the movement. Oh, do they live in a, that tent particularly? Is that someone else's tent? Um, I think it's it's like one of the camps' tents. Oh, I see. I know that Blade is a very a strong activist. Um, oh, wow, my boss is going to love me. I'm going to equal wash Hawaii shirt the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call him right now. <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out there for recording purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to do an interview just to go over that point and clarify? Uh, if you want to. Yeah, sure. Let me just get your name and information. Gloria. G-L-O-R-I-A. Black Ford. Black, like a vision glass. And Ford, the truck. Yeah, they've gone up to the people inside the tent several times and talked to them, try to talk them out of it, try to talk, you know, whatever, but they're leaving. Well, yeah. Everybody's leaving one by one. Look at the group that's standing here is less and less. movement since the beginning. It's been fun. How do you feel about this? You know, it's, it's interesting. Cause I, I'm not sure which... There have been so many raids now. I'm trying to remember which one. So many what? No, no, no. I've been out here a bunch of times for different raids and everything. I noticed those, the HPD guys with the special bands, they're the same ones that come out here every time, right? 
Yeah, it's Aloha Police from uh, APEC. <laughs> Yeah. What do you think they're going to do? Well, I mean, you saw EMTs and a uh, fire department leave. I mean, they're in a way where they, if they cut the lock on the outside, they could probably just cut the chains and haul them out. Yeah, but, I mean, how far do they want to go for a $30 tent? You know, that, that's what people have to realize. It, this is... the. Fixing the house situation is an easy deal, but everybody's scared of it because they don't want to have to deal with that. Right now, it's come down to how important is a $30 target tent? How, how important is that? How much money is it worth the spend of the cities to not address the situation, but attack to go after a $30 tent? It's not about people. It's about property. There isn't anyone here that's offered any kind of health care or any kind of means to get off the street. The only thing that they're here for is that tent. And that's the problem. You know? And, and, and though some of the media has tried to spin a bad view on the Occupy movement, this is this kind of stuff, though, you know, you can look at it and say, well, they're causing all this havoc. Who told all these people to come here and attack that one tent? Not those individuals. You know, we have the, the state constitution in the preamble in the six in Seventh Amendment that says that's legal. We had this, uh, the U.S. Constitution in the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment that says that's illegal. We also have the document that was signed by Neil Abercrombie sent to Obama when he demanded a 10-year plan on how to solve this issue, stating that this kind of activity would not go on. So, they've done nothing but go against it. Yeah. But, you know, they've done nothing but go against what everybody says, even the State Department. You know, it's this is a complete waste of funds. It should be housing first, you know, or, you know, you should be looking at job location or job training. We have unions that I've talked to that's more than willing to sit there and work out a deal to get some of these people off the street and get them jobs with job training that they can use. But the city here doesn't want to allow it. Well, that's because that's Kevin there, and he's actually a good guy. He's a real good guy. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Kevin's a good guy. I, I, I've never had a problem with Kevin. Can I throw something out there? Um, you know, the what kind of gets me is that the homeless down there where their stuff is packed up after they've thrown away. To me, this is a symbol of our trying to help the people as opposed to the government trying to help the people. And by them, by the government attacking this particular movement, they're hurting this, a symbol of uh -oh. us Did we win? Yet yeah, again? Discussions are happening. Don't don't don't. Oh, look at that! They're getting in their cars. Are they? Or are they just moving into the shade? <laughs> That's what democracy looks like. Yeah, I agree. Someone should be live streaming from the tent, but at the same time, nobody has the funds to be replacing a $700 phone. So, yeah. <laughs> Do 
Yay! Hashtag winning! <laughs> So it's, it's nice that they've taken down the tape and gone on to probably still from other houseless populations because they're getting behind on their daily schedule of format. Uh, but unfortunately, we're, we're not going anywhere. We're not. Uh, what is this? I noticed your arms are in this uh, thing here. What, what is this? Is, this is called a box box. Thanks for giving them water, man. Hey guys, hashtag winning. Hashtag winning. <laughs> hashtag winning. <laughs> hashtag winning. Yeah. Next week, I wonder why they win. Oh, man. This idea was a fight. Huh? This idea was a fight. Yeah. A few people. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, the HPD is leaving. Uh, medics have left. Fire department has left. The street department is on their way out. Deoccupy Honolulu has yet won another battle. I'm tired of having to fight because I've got to have their medication. At some point, somebody has to stand up and tell this thing that we're serious. They can no longer continue to torment the housing population. How they need to be solving this is actually going out and providing services, properly funding, help expand out shelters, food pantries. what they do, and, they, and Trish Mortow has talked about this, how she feels it's her job to put the houseless in a state of crisis. Well, Trish, they're already in a state of crisis. How you help them is going and talking to them. They don't want to listen, so we're saying no. We're refusing to move. What did Trish tell you about what's going to happen to you? Uh, they have told us that if we did not remove ourselves, uh, that they would go ahead and uh, charge or arrest us uh, for obstruction of government business. Sorry, government operations. But they backed off at this point, so are you... Well, I... Are they gone? It's all I hear from police officers. Yeah, they're gone. They left. They left. They left. They left. They left. All the officials have gone. They left. Well, well they... Well, hashtag winning. Let's see how long <laughs> they continue to race. If they continue to race. The thing is that we're in a public school here. We're outside of a park. So, a lot of people need to be Minimum wage is the highest rate of minimum wage anywhere in the country. 
this the city and the state does not protect the citizens. The rate of houselessness keeps on increasing. The rate of services keeps decreasing. And what do you love with the city? You want to Pineapple glitch, we're getting off. All right, bye.